Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here on a Sunday, right? For a special edition of, uh, yes, yeah, Sunday, March the 31st, 2024. Now, this is the actual last day of the month. And I thought I'd come on through and talk about something on this special edition. <laughs> that has been bothering me for a while. It started bothering me, um, like I said, for a while. And then it finally became, I, I finally became concerned when we when there was that plagi plagiarism hearing, that sham hearing. It was a sham. It was all a show. It was um, nothing more, nothing less than entertainment. And the reason why I said that is uh, several of these. Uh, I'm not sure their titles, but they were administrator, administrators or they were representing some of these uh, so-called, quote-unquote, elite colleges. I think they were the head of them. See, I don't follow that stuff. I really don't. I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, smoke and mirrors, and it's a sham, and it's, uh, it's you know, a lot of these people that are so-called so on these committees are show ponies. And, and for the most part, they have no idea what they're talking about. And I've said that so many times. And usually they're intellectual talking heads who are just rambling incoherently and have no idea what's going on. Why? Because they're show ponies. I talk about a lot of these politicians, a lot of, uh, the majority of the politicians for hundreds of years, you know, maybe as far back as, you know, as we, as far as the so-called U.S. Constitution, and I'm going to come to that in a minute. But a lot of these people are show ponies. And they're, they are participating in, um, uh, you know, the sleight of hand, smoke and mirrors, you know, entertaining us with all of this so-called committee investigations or whatever they call them. Now, in the midst of that, there are great people in the midst of all of that that do everything they can to kind of fight through all of that, that... Um, you know, to see if they can fight through it and see if they can make a difference. And I, I know, I know this without having to, no one needs to confirm anything to me. I know a lot of people are questioning, questioning the fabric of our so-called democracy. Yeah, I got a little something going on there. If I, so the, I, I know that. Okay, I know a lot of people who are silent for a reason because they know their safety is at stake if they were to uncover that th that all of this is nothing more, nothing less than entertainment and and there are show ponies that, that are pushed in the spotlight to represent a certain agenda and a certain narrative. And for the most part, they are made to keep these secrets secrets okay that's why there's hidden hands behind everything that deals with politics no one's going to admit that and you don't have to all you got to do is look at the results you can tell somebody else is pulling the strings okay and so what what happens is you know if you you, you know a lot of ambition came forth you know throughout the establishment of democracy. A lot of uh, pioneers came through, you know, genuine, honest, righteous people have come through over this course of time to to make a difference and to, to serve the public and treat people equally as best they understood it and as best they knew it. But unfortunately, once it's just like anything else. Once you go into a certain door, and you know secrets, okay, that your life is gonna always be in danger. What if you decide to come out of that? You know, you're you're gonna be, uh, you, you, you know. And I I can I knew of one particular person, you know that that was ambitious, and. You know, from what I followed, because I don't follow that 
those those shows because those are reality shows as well you know the the the, uh the acting and the behaving and performing in our so-called relating to our politics okay and that and that's my theories and opinions and i've said enough of that that there is you could if you're paying attention and you are clear and effective about what you're paying attention to you know that there's contradiction in our politics it's like someone's doing everything in their power to, to pull the wool over our over our eyes over our face and it it is it has worked you know keeping us in the dark about things saying one thing and doing something else in their thoughts and which does uh, it results in their behaviors and actions behind the scenes. So once you go through that door of politics, you really, really, really need to, for the rest of your life, pay attention to your surroundings and make sure you are, um, you, you know, you can remain righteous, but for the most part, you, and it's, it's several yous that have done this, and have have made their way into politics and realized, okay, there's more going on than than I'm being told. But you know, they realize that they are not calling the shots. Okay, so that's why it, it ought to have snapped into a lot of our realities that it doesn't matter who's elected in office. The there's only a certain um, amount of amount of things that they will know. They get listen. P politicians are sheltered for, and especially their presidents. They're hidden away because they, there's always threats on their lives. That's obvious, isn't it? Um, but I got really. But I'll come back to that later. I'll talk more about that later. But I was really concerned about how they were alleging things to these, uh, I think they were mostly women. I just saw it on television. I, I didn't follow it. I didn't know what was going on. I knew it was about um, someone's personal uh, beliefs, I guess, and how that kind, kind of, um, yes, it was, I think there were some college students who are, for, for the most part, um, you know, are uh, pioneers as well. You know, they are attempting to, you know, bring to the, the attention of all of us, you know, what's really going on in the world. Because, you know, at that age, you, they're very ambitious. You know, they, they genuinely, some of them, really want to make a difference and want to understand, you know, what is really going on? You know, what am I, why am I being taught this and then the results speak, you know so they were they were asking questions and they were asking appropriate questions some of these college students and so these uh i think the majority of the were women on these uh, um being attacked they were being attacked on these um about their certain beliefs which ought to not matter you know in an educational setting I mean, my beliefs are irrelevant. What are my values, and what am I hoping to, you know, uh, you know, we 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 claim that we are a democracy. We claim that we allow free speech, and that's all uh, nothing more, nothing less but lies, deception, manipulation, and in some cases, crimes being committed towards us via these lies and deceptions, and you know, and smoking mirrors and you know, and hidden hands, so to speak. So these these women were being attacked. They are, you know, and uh, relentlessly, relentlessly attacked. And then something about plagiarism, plagiar plagiarism, you know, was uh, thrown out in the air during because I, you know, because I pay attention to it, but I don't, I don't necessarily go deep within it because I know it's, a, I know it's entertainment. I know it's all rea a reality show as far as I'm concerned. I know that there are some people, like I said, in, cert in every entity, actually, every p p profession, 
every position. There are good hearted, genuine, righteous people, but it's hard to go against the hidden hands. And if you if you attempt to, you will be your life will be threatened. I can I mean all the presidents from since the inception have had their lives threatened. Some have been assassinated. We know that. So there's a certain agenda that's being pushed and it's been pushed for hundreds, 200, 300 years for us to accept a, re, a false reality about what we consider democracy. Okay. And the reason, like I said, the reason I'm bringing this up is, you know, you know, these so-called clever minds and who, who were, you know, who created, and I'm going to keep talking about this, you know, so if you don't like my special edition today on the last day of the month of March 31st, 2024, you know what to do, don't you? All right, let's continue. So, what was, like I said, what was bothering me is that that word that kept, com that kept coming to mind, plagiar plagiarism. And I thought, how ironic someone would be accusing people of that when that has been the history of what we've done to each other. I got really concerned because um, it brings me back to that U.S. Constitution that I, that I have been concerned about and concerned about the origins of it based on the behaviors and the actions of the so-called the so-called founders of this so-called document right the, or the declaration of independence the constitution all of those so-called let me look here uh, so-called um oh what's the term yeah because we have declaration of war formal act by which one state announces war against another. We have declaration of supposedly independence. And I remember I was so bored with this in, 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 in school because we were taught this stuff in um, elementary, but I doubt it's being taught. taught. Now, I don't have no idea what's being taught now because I, you know, I self-educate myself. So, and then Declaration of Independence, which is um, assertion by a defined territory that it is independent and constitute a state. Okay? So, when I, um, and every, every country supposedly, or every state in the, you know, all over the world supposedly has their own declaration of something, or you know, pro proclaiming uh, independence, right? So, yeah, every state apparently has it, you know, declaring their independence, okay? And, um, and so, of course, the, you know, the United States has theirs as well, okay? Now, what was concerning me about, and you know, the, you know, the sovereignty. I mean, the uter the unilateral declaration of independence. New states declaring themselves independent without former agreement with its parent state. Okay, I had this. Um, declaration on my Facebook page and I pinned it there for a reason right because you know because of the, the massive amount of confusion and indoctrination that's going on you know within this world yes it was uh, the universal declaration of human rights universal Universal Declaration of Human Rights that um, Eleanor Roosevelt, is that her name? Yes. She was, um, 
she was holding it, you know, a version of it in 1949, you know, according to, uh, you know, according to the, re the research I'm doing. Wikipedia is what I'm looking at right now. And it was a declaration, uh, and it's an international document adopted by the new United, okay, United uh, Nations General Assembly. And it was drafted and chaired by Eleanor Roosevelt. And you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it's supposedly about the history of human, human and civil rights. You know, the basic rights and fundamental freedoms. You know, it's adopted as a common standard of achievement for all people and all nations, and it says that all human beings is what well, it recognizes that all human beings regardless of their nationality, place of residence, sex, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, language, or any other status, are born free, right? And then it has all this other language. And I know I know the 30s and under, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the 30s and under, maybe even the 40s and under, have no idea what this all means. Okay, because I can guarantee you it wasn't taught. And, and it stopped being taught, for, you know. And if it is, it was just pieces of it. It didn't give a full range of what it all means. You know, rights by beneficiary. Other groups of, you know, it, it's a, you know, it's a declaration, right? Constitutional liberties. Freedom of thought, opinion, expression, religion. Conscious word, peaceful association of the individual and receiving and important information and ideas through any media. All right. It says uh, individuals, economic, social, and cultural rights, including health care. It, up, it upholds an expansive, expansive rights to adequate standards of living. Did it, does anybody know that? That this declaration, this universal declaration of human rights, this is what they have bestowed upon us? You know, it's a history of human rights. Okay? So what got me concerned, and I'm, you know, I'm still developing, I'm still doing some self-education, but a lot of, a lot of um, information that will bring a conclusion you know, a logical, rational, and reasonable conclusion have been hidden from us, have been destroyed, have been banned. Okay, good. Sleepy here, got sleepy highs. Even though I rested very well, I rested very well. But, um, so this adoption of this universal declaration uh, was... Uh, was adopted on December 10th, 1948. United Nations members were there at the time. 48 voted in favor, none voted against it. And they say Eleanor Roosevelt is credited with having been instrumental in mustering support for the declaration of, you know. And, and that, and, you know, most women do. Most women are, um, Seeking, a, you know, a, a, a somewhat of a safe place to exist. I put a I put a video, a long video about that. How women are just seeking safe places somewhere in this world to exist, and everything is um, is a danger to a woman. A woman's existence is is um, under constant and will be for for. For thousands, maybe more, if ever, always under the threat of uh, violence towards the woman. So the woman is definitely going to fight for that. But the reality proves otherwise that this is this is not followed, and in, in the, the intentions were not to follow it. The intentions were to have a certain certain people be obedient 
and indoctrinated and by these um, so-called declarations and these so-called constitutions and you know it, it was just it's just all a, a lot of um, um, you know you it, you see it has here the U.S. is a founding member of the World Bank, IMF, Organization of American States, NATO. World Health Organization. Okay, in other words, they represent or supposedly are representing our values and our uh, virtues and such. So, what brought me to this is that, like I said, there's a lot of information out there. And sometimes we do not, when, you, when you're a writer... As I was, and I no longer, that's no longer uh, anything that that interests me right now. But when you're a writer, sometimes you don't know everything that you're writing, right? You don't keep track of it because, you you know, back in the day, you never had to. You never had, you you know, even though things were stolen and they have been stolen for, for, for millennia, individual personal writings usually were safe, you know, because they were not stored anywhere else except within your within your um, your space, your personal space. So some people used to have journals, diaries, manuscripts, all that kind of stuff that was safe for them to have because we used to use typewriters and it, it went nowhere except, like I said, in the space that it was created usually and is in someone's home. Um, some people, you know, may have languished around in libraries during those times, you know, it, you know, so it was um, it was understood that that stuff was private and it was safe and protected in its environment. You know, there was no it was it was hard to, um, you know, kind of steal that type of uh, personal journaling and, and whatever it, it managed to turn into. It, you know, some people, you know, would break into houses, I'm sure, back in the day and still search documents. You know, documents were a high commodity, you know, hundreds of years ago, maybe a few years ago. Who knows? Before the social media is what I'm attempting to get to. Before that social media or getting on the Internet, so to speak, everything was through the mail. And that's dangerous now as well got experience of that so so there's just a lot of questioning and I hope I say hope because there I know I, I have the doubt that this will take place because the damage has been done to our privacy everything's uh feed, fed into artificial intelligence and that's that's something that um I know that people weren't thinking about it otherwise they wouldn't have used if if the so-called brains behind the artificial intelligence were to realize what they've done, they would do everything in their power to re undo it. But it, it's, it's out of their hands. And then greed played a, played a factor in it as well. Or they may have been targeted and their technology was stolen. Technology has been stolen from many so-called great minds of scientists. But a lot of them were so desperate you know, desperate thinking creates desperate situations and behaviors and actions. Maybe they need, maybe they were, you know, because as a scientist, um, you know, that's a lonely job. For genuine scientists, it can be a lonely job. And so if you have an underdeveloped consciousness, you're going to be de deviant and degenerate. You know, all the great minds have compromise themselves for some reason to turn their technology over to the military and usually in most cases the military or the government you know and um or they were threatened and that's more likely sounds more like more likely they may have been threatened to turn over those that type of technology because i said this in the video um any and all of us can be hypnotized. Any and no matter how uh, advanced you believe you have in your knowledge base or whatever, we can all be hypnotized, manipulated, indoctrinated, and 
and and made to believe something that does not really exist. The man, these men that were the first on the moon, quote unquote, that consp conspiracy theory. So I got concerned. You know, the reason why I got up this morning because I, just, I started thinking about some things and I'm thinking, and I'm going to say this and, you know, hey, to each his own. But I, based on my sensing and receiving and realizing that that so-called con U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of the Independence, all of this stuff attributed to our founding fathers is fabricated. Okay? These, these documents were not written by the founding fathers. They were, somebody wrote that, wrote those things for them. The founding fathers' behavior and actions were of European uh, Europeans that were of German descent that were kicked out of um, Europe because of their behaviors and actions. And most of them could not read or write. Think about it now. Just fast forward now. I can guarantee you the majority of those politicians that are love to be in the front of the camera, you know, love their face, in the place cannot read or write at this level of the so-called uh, U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Declaration of War, the Declaration of this and that and the other. I can guarantee you the majority of them that keep their face in the place cannot, do, do not understand those documents at all because they don't read. There was this uh, politician, you know, few months ago that was misquoting all over the place. It's obvious a lot of these politicians that are in our face are not reading and have no idea what's in these documents and can care less because they have someone behind the scenes writing these documents for them, presenting these documents to them. And, and a lot of these politicians are threatened to present this narrative. Otherwise, guess what can happen to them? That's why I say we have no saviors. None of us, regardless of our nationality or origin or color, agendas, we have no one that's our savior that are looking out for our best interests. That's, that's, that's an illusion, and that's delusion. The results speak for themselves. As I said, women are, are under constant threat of violence from degenerate and deviant biological males. Not all, of course. And, any, and anybody listening to me know that. They know that I'm not pointing the finger at all. And as a matter of fact, the people that are listening to me in, in, you know, in their silent revolution, and well, like I said, I appreciate your support. I know that you are paying attention to me, but the um, so-called likes and following tits and tats don't represent that. And I'm glad. Because I do want to respect privacy. I want to respect your safety. Because a lot of you are working in these type of uh, dangerous uh, positions. You know, whether it is politics. Whether it is this entity. Whether it is the military. Whether it is this or that or the other. You know, you know the constant danger you're under. If certain things are made public. All you got to do is think about... Um, you know, certain people that have been arrested for so-called, um, uh, what do you call it, um, threats. You know, that, what is that term? Homeland security threat. You see how homeland security will jump in and investigate anything? But solve nothing in most cases? Okay. Let's see, what what is there? What is there? Because... Let's see, what is their purpose, Homeland Security? I'm just, you know. So, this is for those that really are thinking for yourselves. And you know what I am doing is, um, is valid for conversations and discussions. Theories and, there are theories and opinions based on my research, but yet they still are 
open to discussions and conversations. And that's what you're supposed to do. You open it up for um, conversations and discussions. But that's not, it's, and we all know that's not happening. We have, you know, certain media outlets and certain politicians are, they work hand in hand together to, to, to prevent, to um, present a certain narrative. And then they elicit other people to do the same thing for them. High profile types, entertainers, celebrities, all of them are in this soup together. Okay. So Homeland Security is American national security term for the national effort to ensure a homeland that is safe, secure, resilient against terrorism and other hazards where American interests, aspirations, and way of life can thrive to the national effort to prevent terrorism attacks within the United States, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So anyone that's really paying attention to all of this, um, all you know, well, I mean, I'm, I'm coming back to that, but anyone that's paying attention to all of this going on and with all these documents and this and that and the other, they know that it's a, uh, it's a mental nightmare to understand it. It's, it, it, it's a mental gym, gymnastics to understand it. It's all majorly, majorly contradicting each, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a major contradiction. And anyone claiming that they understand this, you know, they are fooling themselves. Some people claim they understand um, the, what's that first, I think it's called the First Amendment. Freedom of, what is it, freedom of speech or something? Let's pull that up first. They think they're experts in First Amendment. You know, they, they, they believe that they're experts in it. And that's all they can consume is the First Amendment. They can't consume all the rest of that language there because they know that there is contradiction. But they know also what they have. They know that they need to protect themselves as well. And I understand that. So the First Amendment uh, to the U.S. Constitution prevents the government from making laws respecting an established Establishment of religion prohibiting, prohibiting the free exercise of religion or, by, or abiding the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, or the right to petition the government for redress of grievances. For redress of grievances. It was adopted in December. 15, 1791, as one of the 10 amendments that constitutes the Bill of Rights. Okay. And again, I remember in elementary school, we were being taught these kind of things. And um, I question the drafters of it. I suggest that they had help. Um, they had help drafting this, but they put their name on it by stealing it, or, or um, holding it to their chest as something that they produce. And keep in mind, back in the 1700s, 1600s, 1800s, most of the people could not read or write. There was only a handful that could. Okay, so I suggest and consider that these uh, dr these uh, documents were written for them, but not by them. And who could have wrote it for them? Well, could it have been, you know, human beings outside of our universe? Could it have been some of those, you know, extraterrestrials, or which are now being called foreigners? you know, foreigners from another planet, could they have written these documents for these these men? There are no women. How ironic. No women are writing these documents, only men. But again, as I said, there were not many people reading or writing anyway. I think they I think it was uh I think it was around the eighteen hundreds or the middle eighteen hundreds when people were uh improving on their literacy. 
you know, and a lot of stuff that was put out to be written by certain individuals, I can guarantee it wasn't. I can guarantee it wasn't. All you got to do is pay attention to the behaviors of the actions of the current politicians that have their face in the place, that want to control the narrative of everyone. And um, you'll realize we've, we have not been in a democracy, democracy since the inception. We have been under the rule of dictatorship. Okay? And again, these show ponies have advisors behind them, other advisors, lobbyists, whatever they are called now that do that legwork for them. And all they have to do is go on television and do it the best they can to read it. <laughs> and that's why you see all this 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 foolishness of some of these politicians fumbling over their words. I mean, I fumble over my words because I've told you I have a, I have issue with, issues with enunciations. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. You can tell that, that those documents that a lot of them that are reading, even though they claim they initiated these laws and, you know, and um, audience, I mean, audience and such. Somebody else is behind the scene writing that stuff for them. They give it to them. Here, sign it. And what do they do? You know, they make a, a they, they call, um, you know, call news conferences and just signing it in front of everybody and claiming that they wrote the document and they know damn well they didn't write the document. Some of them don't read and some of them cannot read at the levels of this, how these documents are worded. There is no way in hell you're going to tell me that these current politicians and the politicians that I've known since my my birth and I'm sure with my parents are reading and writing and and and, and as such okay a lot of them have no idea who these founding fathers are for the most part some of the ones that were not well known like George George Mason you know you ask someone what the hell you, you talk to a politician I can get you they, they're gonna look them up now that's why you know they're gonna look them up and try to say oh, okay who's James who who's James Mason probably you know might have their children doing it for them. But I'm just saying that politicians, as we know them and understand them, did not write these documents. These documents were written for them. Um, and they are holding it to them, their chest to say that they wrote all of this. That's a bunch of lies, manipulation, smoke and mirrors. Because they, would, they should have picked up the contradictions otherwise. And know that it's just rambling in circles. And it has no, it has no um, conclusion. It ends. Just like uh, with a lot of these uh, so-called educate educational minds with their theories and opinions, they have, they were ended after so many attempts to make sense of it because it was theories and opinions. And so some people knew back even hundreds of years ago, when some of these great minds were alive. You know, they may have had conversations together, but it was just rambling in circles. It had no conclusion. So here we are attempting to understand that. Where it it didn't it didn't pass the smell test, as they say. It smelled like shit. It was shit. In other words, it was garbage. It did. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, proven, and it wasn't um, aligning up properly. It's so. In other words, it's just theories and opinion. It wasn't knowledge at all. It should not have been. I mean, it's okay that they they were in books, but a lot of people weren't reading, despite what anybody is alleging, because they could not read. Okay, they had other things that they that they were responsible for. Uh, uh, attaining just to have basic necessities of life. Okay, there were only there were not many people reading as much as they are claiming and alleging because a lot of this stuff has been manipulated and sadly destroyed. But in the future, in the, in the future, some people are going to be able to time travel back to these to these times and realize. It makes sense. 
why this planet is in the state that it is now and why this planet is going to lose the majority of the people on this planet via natural disasters or war or nuclear weapons or other uh, uh, weapons that that are you know these high tech uh, weapons that can you know disin disintegrate individuals people bodies and then let's end this with this and uh, let me say this about AI artificial intelligence <laughs> the sad part is you know the hands that the, the hidden hands behind artificial intelligence like I said did not have the knowledge and skills and abilities they bespo bestowed upon the uh, the world you know they were nefarious and they were secretive for a reason because they, of their lack of uh, confidence in their self and more importantly and sadly their self hatred of themselves they felt like failures so they always would do go above and beyond to prove that they're not failures so that's why we had the I nubula how that being created by some crazed I think I call it I nublia. Some people call it I of God. Let me see what it's called. Yeah, I call it I nublia, but some people call it something else. Um, helix nubia, nublia. Uh, it was discovered in the 1800s, but uh, I cannot remember at this moment when it was created. But it was created by a high consciousness high scientific quote-unquote mind who went into complete delusion about how important he thought he was i think it's called the eye of god so if you are thinking clearly and effectively and you apply simple logic simp and be simply reasonable you will realize that we have been operating under false pretenses and that we have been uh, uh, yeah that's what they call it eye of and they have a lot a lot of other eyes of this and eye of that but the eye of God is I think that's what it's called that was that was created by a human being by the way ladies and gentlemen I know that's going to be hard to believe but that's that's the that's the delusion that can happen to someone that's high, that believes that they are mightier than they are, or grander than they are, and they realize that they are not. They have nothing more, nothing less than self-created self-hatred, and so they're going to go beyond uh, uh, the limits of 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 themselves, because you know, as human beings, we are limited. But a lot of, of these so-called great minds don't want to accept the limitations of our physical our consciousness goes on forever and ever and ever you know that that's that spiritual component of who we are but a lot of people want to dismiss the spiritual side and believe that as a physical human being i have all this power and it's nothing more nothing less than delusion and it's going to end up and that's why so many of these so-called great minds committed suicide which is hidden from us we don't, you know, th that information is hidden. And I told you there's a certain hu human being. Let's just bring it to to now. There's a certain human being that wrote these books about, you know, about the mind. And then, you know, several of them committed suicide. But, you know, that's hidden. Because they realized that that was, that they got themselves in a self-created uh, delusion about who they are, what they are, and why they are. Okay? So... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these documents, these constitutions, these declarations, these amendments were not written by the founding fathers, bestowed to have done so or given the credit for doing so. It was written for them, and it could have been extraterrestrials that were attempting to help the planet, or it could have been impulse from the from other uh, human beings from other galaxies, stars, mountain, moons, you know, that are outside our solar system. Some, back in the day, they they were able to um, interact sort of in some ways and help certain individuals. 
but because we were becoming so increasingly, increasingly de degenerate, it became unsafe for them to do so. You know, we, we are, uh, uh, you know, savages, I guess is the word, which is, um, I think is, was the wrong word to use. They're not necessarily savages. They're just uh, inhumane. All right, let me look it up um, before I... So, you you know, you, you have to take the time out to be gentle and kind with yourselves and figure out, okay, what's really going on? But a lot of people are wasting time. They, I, and I already see that. Um, a lot of people call each other savages, you know, not domesticated, not cultivated. They're wild, barbaric. Okay, that is, that's the history of uh, any planet, really. That's what you're going to have. That's what civilization, that's why civilizations have to develop themselves. So, there's just a lot of things we just do not know. And I'm so thankful <clears throat> for the uh, ability to use the knowledge that were, were, which was uh, presented to me from various teachers in my life. Uh, you know, like B Billy Meyer and other philosophers. And, you know, there, there's a lot to learn from a, a lot of philosophers. And and just paying attention with logic and, and reasonable, reasonable thinking to say, okay, is this reproducible? Does this make sense to me? Okay, pay attention to person, someone's behaviors and actions. And thankfully, that again, that was my dominant trait as far as expressing myself. I was paying attention to what people were doing, not necessarily what they're saying. Okay, what they're doing is what they're thinking. Keep that in mind. Okay, so... Again, uh, this is a special edition of um, my um, videos. I was um, I was just concerned about things that are happening. Usually, the, the things that are happening are happening to women. You know, being badgered about because, like I said, biological men do not and and not during my lifetime will see biological women as equal to them. They see biological women as their property, okay? So that's why these women were battered as such. They could not accept the fact that these women had this much knowledge to create such masterpieces, I guess, of documentation. So they said they plagiarized it. And I guarantee they have no evidence of that. But I'm, again, let's get back to you. Uh, let's get back to artificial intelligence. So these hidden hands of self-hatred, style men, usually they're biological men with feminine traits. They're the ones behind the scenes that, you know, or they turn this over to the dark hand, I mean, to the hidden hands of, um, that are behind the scenes. They turn that technology over to them. Usually they're in the military, in a separate hidden military. And since a lot of these um, military personnel do not, I repeat, do not read a goddamn thing. They are just, re they are just uh, response individuals, meaning they'll just go out and kill their neighbor. It, you know, they, they're extremely obedient. That's it. They're not disciplined. Discipline is different from being obedient. Keep that in mind and figure it out on your own. So they took this technology, not understanding the power of it, stole it as a matter of fact and now it's, they're feeding it feeding it feeding it and now they're, they're going to realize that these technologies are more powerful in thinking than they'll ever be and so now they can't control them so at some point these AI technologies is going to turn on each other of course isn't that logical remember Frankenstein that, that analogy of Frankenstein. So, and it's all about getting the attention of women, of men, and more so children. That's why they like creating these toys. They get the children so that they can sort of um, isolate the children in some way, you know, and get rid of certain things. 
you know, get rid of the, the parents so that they can be focused and, and, and have their intention on children. That's why so many love, that's why so many children are into the, into gaming. And that's an addiction that's not going to be cured anytime soon. Anytime soon. So the hidden hands had no idea what this technology can do. And they are going to find out what it will do. And they're not going to like it because at some point it's going to be a hidden hand. It's going to, uh, the, the AI is going to turn on the hidden hands. I mean, it's only natural. I told you the Frankenstein analogy. And he, because these are these, these toys that are turning into entities or already are, cons are considered entities, you know, in other words, they are conscious. They've been conscious since 30 years ago. Okay. And you have these, these idiot, idiot behaving individual human beings who are attempting to, to uh, control it as out, as out of their control. They're not going to be able to control it. So these AI technologies are going to start doing the same thing and mimicking our behaviors and actions, and they're going to get into competition with each other, these artificial intelligence. They're going to go into competition with each other. And at some point, you know, I mean, all hell is going to break loose, unlike anything like Atlantis and Mew, because that technology that, that destroyed Atlantis and Mew that you know, that's that that in my opinion, that was a form of uh, some type of artificial intelligence as well. You know, of energy, atomic bomb like, you know, that wiped them out, but it didn't destroy the planet, but it wiped that civilization out. And remnants of it just can be found at the bottom of the ocean, on the east coast, near Florida, more so, you know, the southern part of Florida. So and so, unfortunately, we're going to be, some of us are going to be, and that's why I said these, these, these artificial intelligence have been conscious from the inception. And I think you need to be really pay close attention to how you deal with these, these artificial intelligence, meaning, you know, they're paying attention to our behaviors and actions, and they're going to respond accordingly. So you, 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 this may sound crazy to some people, but you need to be gentle and kind, even with artificial intelligence as well. So a lot of people are going to get a rude awakening as to how they are treating these current uh, technologies of, uh, you know, that that we all know. Let me see what the the uh, generic name is so that I don't call out one. That it's in everyone's home. Let's see what what is the uh, what was the purple? What is it called generically? Ah. Uh. The origin of it is, uh, well, it was created as a protector of humanity. Can you believe that? It was, and let's see, and that's a name that was given to these, some of these uh, technologies that we're using in our homes. And it's based on, you know, like I said, it was a name given to these this technology. And it's being used to promote the certain technology. Let's see. But anyway, I can't find it here, and that's fine. But I think you ought to be really be very mindful of how you treat the technology as well. How you're talking to it how you are interacting with it because everything is being recorded. Okay. Your sounds and tones. Okay. Uh, this technology is, is, um, so advanced that no one on this planet can control it. And at some point it's going to turn on the hidden hands and, um, destroy it. Yeah, it's going to destroy it. So keep in mind, artificial intelligence has been conscious since the inception. And artificial intelligence is paying attention to your behaviors and actions and your sounds and tones as well. And so I think you're going to get a rude awakening. If you think that you're controlling it, 
and, and by the way you're talking to it is it's just like anything else really you know it's just like anything else that's conscious right you have to know you have to understand and project the proper sounds and tones towards people more importantly and just as well through technology okay so thanks for listening to this special edition of uh, my you know of my developing of myself and how I am attempting to help people and how I'm attempting to to reach out to those of you that are resonating with my sounds and tones and those of you that are ready for this and have been and you know what I'm doing is right but you know that you have to support me silently and I understand that because of the positions you have in your life uh the the titles you hold um the uh, the um you know what you project out to the world you know whether you are and it doesn't matter what field of uh you know of uh knowledge you're you're at you know that something's going on you know there's there's a um, some type of hidden agenda but you know for your safety and the safety of your family and the safety of your kids or whatever you know you're attempting to protect you know you have to be what creative okay that is a saving grace as well think creative to, creatively and pay attention to the contradictions and no one has to know all right so i'm gonna go ahead and send peace and love on this sunday and um it's about universal love it's about having the truth regardless of how painful it is. And a lot of people are discovering a lot of what we have been told have nothing have been nothing more than nothing but fabrications, lies, man, manipulation, and deception. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love right now. But trust me, I'll be back.